And let me tell you something. Could I help you? You can study the Bible and not have principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. You can attend Bible studies and don't know the Bible. Yeah. You can have CDs in your car and don't know the Bible. Mm -hmm. sure. It's about intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's about being intimate with God. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So religion wants to keep you from seeing the light. Not only does it want to keep the light from you, it don't want you to have a road of Damascus experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wants you to, it wants to justify all of your activities mm -hmm. that is independent of God. Mm -hmm. Justification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have to go to church this Sunday. <sighs> Good day, <laughs> I don't really have to study today. I get it tomorrow. Tomorrow come, you don't study that day, you make another one. <laughs> Put it in the make a middle note. God understands. <laughs> really. <laughs> no. No, no. It ain't for God. It's for you. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 See, uh, we're going to get to that because that's the performance-based stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're great performers, by the way. Church people are excellent. Let me tell you something. You talking about an Emmy? <laughs> Going out of the wall? Hey, Amen. Morgan Freeman ain't got that on us. <laughs> Trust me. We are an actor. We've been, we've been taught to act. Touch two people, tell them you love them with the love of the Lord. <laughs> Right? Woo. Touch four more people tell them you're blessed coming in, you're blessed coming out. Woo. Oh, yeah. I am. That's what we do. We like the phylacteries. <laughs> like the hinges. So remember, that's what the religious people had that phylactery. So we like all of them a day. I used to talk to somebody, it's a leader, that I used to call him, and, and I said, like to call and talk. Uh -oh. Blessed and highly favored, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> I just learned to turn another cheek. <laughs> I ain't one yet. I'm believing God for it, but it just don't happen for you unless somebody, you know, just it's not a norm that you just become one. Amen. Yeah, certain yeah. certain connections and things like that. I know God could be who He is, and He is who He is. But most of us are gonna be broke waiting on that dad. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So we like to say all these flowery things, and it doesn't, it just doesn't have the substance. I know I'm ahead of my tackle. We're gonna tackle that sucker. Yeah. I gotta hit it straight between the eyes. <laughs> Cause we need to be authentic, genuine. Yeah. We need to be able to say, "I'm having a bad day." Not every day, just a bad day. Right. It's a season anyway. Some people are chronic and have trials for an indefinite amount of time. Same trial five years later. Same trial, same situation. Same guy, same dude, same girl. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a problem. That ain't just the person you with, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> so the Satan wants to counterfeit everything. He wants to make sure you never come into contact with the true you. He don't want any compliance. He likes shadows. He just wants you to look at it and take a glimpse. He don't mind spiritual voyeurisms. He just don't want you to be persuaded. Yeah, he just wants you to go through the motions. Just, yeah, go through the motions. So he don't mind you give a prophetic word or two to people. He don't mind that. You cast devils out and stuff. He let you do all that. I know a lot of people like that. So get around and be like, what the world is that coming out of your mouth? <laughs> So we can we can do that. Y'all got that? Yes, so whenever light is absent, 
darkness will always flourish. That's why we see what's happening in the body of Christ now. Now I've been following, and I like to follow because I'm a church historian. Well, I'm a bootleg church historian. So I can't take that yeah. and say I am because I haven't read everything. But I've read enough to know where I'm at for the last 150 years and a little bit of the first and second century. But for the most part, I've been watching what's going on with uh, the SBC, South, South, the South Bath, uh, what is it, Southern Baptist Church. And I've been watching some of the things going on and all the, the concealment that's been transpiring certain activities going on. Then I've been watching the AME and some of the Methodist churches. So there's a lot of churches right now that are being uh, scrutinized by society. And I don't think it's the devil. They think it's the devil. I think it's just God cleaning the church up. Amen. <laughs> because we've held a, a certain uh, doctrinal beliefs that are not necessarily consistent with God's pattern. And I believe uh, we won't run empty on them. And God wants to give us a new insight, but because we're we're so exclusive, we don't look we don't know how to when God's getting ready to do something or God is doing something, we don't know how to transition. Is that okay? Yeah. So, one other thing you've got to deal with is that uh, if the enemy can't get if he can't stop the ignorance, or should I say, can't keep the light out of your heart, he likes to put <laughs> systems in place that can somehow legislate it. Religion always seeks, this is another point, religion always seeks power and will revert to anything to achieve that power. Jesus called them the chief seats. So he don't directly remove the light from your heart. But he'll use men and women of God that, under, that loathe, or should I say long for, not loathe, that are zealous for chief seats. So we have people in the pulpit, chief seats, same thing, that's what it means. People in high places. Rulers of darkness of this world. I know you think it's devils, but it's rulers of darkness in the church to sit in the pulpit. They want to make sure that certain information don't get here. That will hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because they figure that, you know, you got to keep you coming. You got to keep you feeling bad. You got to keep the light out. You got to make sure the darkness increases. I know y'all don't believe that, but there are churches that feel that way. And you can tell when you start going to them and tell them, you know, God is showing me something. That's why I try to make room in my heart when people come to me and say, hey, you know what? Even though I'm not in the seats, even though I'm not a person of authority yet, God has given me something in a dream. So we try to make room for what you're seeing. Right. That's the chief seat I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, normally the chief seats are those who make the, uh, get the biggest offers. It's bribes in churches, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Some people are in position not because they're anointed. <laughs> they're in position because they've been blessed. Yeah. And they want to make them. Some people want to make sure that they stay intact. You're not looking at me like I'm just talking. Oh, no. True. These cheap seats are full of lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. These are the seats I'm talking about as well. These are certain seats that's in the church. Seats of a, a, a judgment. Cynicism. Haughtiness. Arrogance. These seats that seeks to subdue the Lord's inheritance. The body, you guys... Those that are watching, you are the Lord's inheritance. This church is not my inheritance. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I'm to bring this house into its inheritance. Mm -hmm. How many know that the captain of our salvation is our inheritance? Mm -hmm. The head of the church. Mm -hmm. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not Stephen. Jesus. <laughs> He's the head of the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so these seats. That's why Jesus came into the temple to overturn the seats. we got to yeah. overturn these seats. And every time we come, we get understanding, even though the enemy is trying to keep us in ignorance mm -hmm. and trying to make sure, make sure that the common wealth of Israel doesn't somehow transfer to your hands, these seats will remain in the body. Mm -hmm. Until you make up your mind, I'm going to grow up in the things of God. Yeah. I'm going to cleave fast to the head. Sure. Those seats in the spirit are cast aside. Yeah. Even at this house. Because everybody, it's not everybody, some people just want to make sure that pastor is the only place that we can conceive. Mm -hmm. mm. 
God forbid if anybody else articulated. I told you some time ago, I'm a complete failure if the only voice you hear is me. Because that's the pastoral model. Mm -hmm. The apostolic prophetic model says that we all have something to say. Yes. Yes. Amen. Right? Amen. Somebody have a revelation. Somebody have a song. Somebody have a hymn. Amen. Somebody have a spiritual song. Yep. That's the day I've been waiting and longing for. Mm -hmm. Where these chairs will be kicked to the side. And tables will be everywhere. You can come at the table, we dine together, and you can say, man, this, this is what God gave me on Tuesday, this is what God gave me on Thursday, this is what God gave me on Friday, this is what God gave me this morning. Let's make some sense out of it. You're talking about growing? Church growth? A friend of mine did a teaching on church growth. It had like 12,000 people. He said, I'm going to tell you how to grow your church. He did a sucker punch. Remember Jay who did a sucker punch? Remember he, <laughs> he got everybody to come in and they didn't know he was getting ready to deal with uh, a Jezebel. Yes, sir. So everybody got in the room. Mm -hmm. So he got everybody into the room. He said, this is how you grow your church. Grow your people. That's it. He said, everybody trying to go spend money, trying to go connect to big ministries, but it's all based on the word of those who've been changed. Yeah. If they haven't been changed, they ain't going to say nothing. I know, I know. Yeah, that's your job. <laughs> You're supposed to say something worthly so they can see you on these different gadgets and come to the storming at the door. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. They come because of your life. That's the spirit. This is John 12 and 9. It's a very powerful principle about they came to see Lazarus, whom the Father, who Christ raised. Mm 